Okay, let's start. Can you hear me well back, back there? Yeah. yeah. Good. Great. 
So, uh, welcome to this uh, speak. Uh, it's going to be uh, about performance testing in Chainmeter. Uh, I'm going to have this speak, hopefully, in other events during this year, but you're the lucky ones having uh, participated in the first one, which is here. So, we're going to be we're going through some definitions to make sure that we are kind of in the same page about what performance means, or at least what I understand what it means, and, and the definition of the users in, in this context, and uh, about uh, defining scenarios in this testing. And then we're going, going through some other available tools. I'm going to run them pretty fast, because there's quite many of them, so don't be uh, I'm going to run the slides pretty fast, so you probably will miss something, but the slides are already, uh, you can download them from the DrupalCamp.London from my sessions to check up later if you're interested in into, into the other tools also. Then uh, I'm going to give a, a demonstration of JMeter. I'm going to demonstrate basically from scratch. And I basically hope that I will cover as much of the most important things, but I definitely don't have enough time to demonstrate all the cool things. Uh, and then I'm going to mention, well, it's not written there, but a couple of like findings I've had in my experience of performance testing, just a couple of them, and then I'm going to quickly mention about one tool about continuous testing. Of, uh, tool and then if we have time then questions and answers. So quickly introduce myself. Uh, I'm Mikael Bundert. Uh, in Drupal Org I'm using the nickname Inixu. But I'm not anymore an Apple fan. I should probably change the nickname. That's why it's an iMixu. But I like to like make uh, really performant solutions uh, I've been, from, from my student life, I remember that it was really exciting to do really tiny changes and, and, and know at the same time when I hit enter and deploy this, it will have an impact for many users and it was really exciting and that's why I'm kind of excited about being or in, making, making like performance systems uh, in that sense. <clears throat> also, performance is something that is really hard to explain to clients, so uh, there must be some tools or some ways to kind of highlight to the clients that uh, when you're launching a project, uh, they know that what kind of, or what kind of traffic they, the system on the infrastructure can handle, and that's really, if you just give a promise like, yes, yes, we're used to this, that, that it will handle this amount of users, or you say that, uh, that uh, you know, it's it's we're not we're not doing hosting. It's not our responsibility or something like that. It's something I wouldn't like to say to a client. I would like to be in a project where we make sure that we have proper proof of when we launch a project, we will actually handle the traffic that we're expecting. Uh, this is also more relevant for like inf uh, like infrastructure systems where uh, where it's not that automatically scaled because. Uh, I don't know, it, it might be actually relevant on that case also, if you want to test the scaling itself, automatic scaling. But it is definitely more important if you don't have automatic scaling on your hosting. <coughs> so, uh, performance for me, what it means, or generally what it means for different persons, uh, it can be basically about the page load, uh, performance may, may be some, to somebody that how many concurrent users it handles or, or a combination of those bo both. There's also thing like there's a different, different concept for concurrency and latency also. So if you talk to, to, uh, to somebody about performance, he might be thinking that yeah, it's basically how fast the page comes to your browser, whereas another person thinks like how many servers I need to make sure that uh, 10,000 people can browse the, 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 the web service. 
uh, for developer perspective, or not maybe actually from developer, but for maybe sys admins or something, uh, they might think about the CPU memory and input output. And from infrastructure perspective, you think basic, basically the network bandwidth and and uh, like uh, the routing, network routing, for instance. Uh, but from from end user perspective is basically how fast the service feels generally. Uh, and there's an, a way, nice way uh, introduced. There's um, I don't know what is called like um, yeah an in, in index score system called Aptex. And you might be familiar with this if you use Neuralink. There's an Aptex score. Uh, I remember one two years ago when I was uh, using Neuralink. And I was wondering what is this thing, and I actually, uh, like two months ago, actually went to the question mark, and it gives you an URL address, and it's quite interesting, and it's a really nice tool. If you want to read more, go to aptex.org to get more uh, into the specifics. But quickly, it's uh, it's a measure for the user satisfaction. It's based on three elements so that uh, are three zones of the application responsiveness, like user that are satisfied, or users that are to tolerating or frustrated. And uh, when people are satisfied, they are basically really productive. So basically, when you're using the web service, you don't you don't get at, at any time you don't get get a feeling that oh I need to wait or like I'm I'm already ready to click the next next element or or that kind of stuff. You will realize when you are tolerating when you start to click new tabs, for instance. If you're, it's really common that if you quickly click around and then you get really complicated Drupal site and you haven't thought about the performance, you, uh, especially when doing administrative tasks in Drupal site, you might find yourself like, yes, I will open that, but I will open in a new tab and I wait that it will load, but I will still you know, click another tabs uh, ready for the next task. And that means that you're tolerating. But if you're satisfied, that it means that you are not like tempted to open always new tabs because the the, the load time is too slow. Uh, for the tolerating, when uh, there's a concept or a value that is we call it t in Aptex, and that means basically how many seconds the satisfied user turns into a tolerated user, and that's not like a fixed number. It you can define this value for yourself. And uh, by default, in New Relic, at least, it's, I think it's 1.5 seconds. And the frustrated users then are the ones that basically are ready to leave. And you know, I don't care anymore. I'm, I'll just go to Facebook or something. <laughs> so this is a nice graph. This is from the aptex.org. Basically, when you specify the t value, it will. There's another value that is the f value, and that's basically t times four. So if you said like uh, half a second is the t value, then two seconds is going to be the f value, if I calculate correctly. <laughs> so there's a formula. So up the score is, set is, uh, is basically calculated as such. So basically, you can see that there's no frustrated users here. They are like, you, you lost them. So you're, you're not getting any points for that. And for tolerating users, you're going to get like half of the points. So for example, if you have hundred samples, which is the, the, the lowest number there. Uh, it means that there's hundred requests made in this test. Um, and 60 of them are uh, satisfied, and then 30 of them are uh, tolerating. And then the rest, uh, the rest 10 requests or samples are, are frustrated, so you get a point of 4.75. And then if you, if you manage to even get like the 10 frustrated user even into the satisfied zone, then you get a little bit higher score. Or if you get everybody, every, everybody into the 100, uh, every, every 100 samples into the, the satisfied ones, then you can get the full one, one score. There's no number over one. And then, this is the, so that was the introduction of the of the Aptex score, and it's a really nice tool. So in performance, when you do reporting or when you do kind of monitoring, 
uh, that's a really good measurement. Specify the t-value for the project and, and then use that when you communicate with your clients or generally it's kind of a really nice measure. But this, uh, this basically doesn't answer directly to the question like how many concurrent users it will handle. So you basically throw the concurrent users and then see what's the rest of the app, app tech score. So let's go into that now. Um, if, if, you, if you already know some tools in, in, um, in, in performance testing, uh, some tools are using threads, and then some are using a term user, and then some are using virtual user. Uh, the ideal way is that you, when, when you do reporting, try to not to use that technical term, um, uh, like threads or something, so try to talk about users. But make sure that your scenarios are the realistic scenarios. A realistic user, you know, have a specific mind when they come to the web service. They want to do a performance task and, and do that. It might get distracted and may deviate from the original process or, or, or you know, they have different devices, they have limited accessibility if you're doing a site that uh, is for blind people, for example, uh, the performance is basically measured more from, from, from you need to consider that they're, they're using deep, different kind of tools for reading the website. It might have an impact on the, on the load pages. For instance, some tools don't load the images that are used, they just scan the DOM and that's it. And then uh, an unrealistic user, of course, that like the first performance test, what I did was that I just use the AB tool up at the benchmark and just load as many page loads as possible to a front page. That's not really realistic at all. So the realistic ones actually, when they when they load the page, they they get the also the JavaScript and then the CSS and, and etc. And they do like real, realistic tasks in the web service. And yeah, let's go to defining scenarios. But before that, quickly, uh, everybody probably now has the same understanding that what performance usually means and 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 what 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 is an ideal ideal user. So let's go now to the defining scenarios. I'm using one example that I did recently, an example case for the Food Standards Agency in the UK. And basically I went to the, it's not yet published, it's in, in private beta, it's going public beta at some point, I don't know when. In a few weeks. In a few weeks, okay. so you can get access then you go beta.food.gov.uk. But uh, it's going to be built in Drupal, and when I quickly watched the, the, the service, I, I found out that probably the users, they go for reading the news and alerts around the food safety. Uh, there are people who are looking for guidance for the business owners, and then information uh, for the visitors about the food safety, and, you know, food, and then food hygiene ratings, and etc. And the demo I'm going to show you, I'll try to do as far as possible to cover one of the cases, which is uh, the visitor looking for a food rating. But if you go back a little bit, that so when you start to design the scenarios for for the performance test, you, you think this like what's the purpose of the service, and then you start to design these uh, scenarios like just giving giving feedback or reporting a food problem and 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 etc. And an ideal performance test is that when, when you define these scenarios, you actually run them at the same time. You don't run like one scenario and then see the results because that's not realistic. In realistic work, probably there are 10% 10, 10 of the persons are uh, probably reading news and then, I don't know, 20% 20 are uh, checking the food hygiene ratings. Then there's two editors that are actually editing the content maybe, which is also causing some cache pur purging and stuff. So that's a realistic kind of thing that uh, you would like to do. Of course, sometimes you are interested in one specific thing that I know that this specific feature will, 
uh, needs to be measured and then that's more likely than to just make one test that gives you that answer but but in realistic world you cannot uh, lean only into that measurement so in probably so if we dip into this case uh, for visitors looking for a food rating uh, <coughs> Basically, that's in the home page. Then he clicks a uh, food hygiene ratings link, and then there might be maybe some of the people are using the advanced options for the search, and then some of them are just you know typing a keyboard and hitting enter. So there's a little deviation there, and then they click perhaps their search result. Of course, there's a small percentage that they don't find what they were looking for. So maybe we drop some of them uh, out from the last last request when you write or do your scenario. Visually basically means that it lands to this front page and then clicks uh, the link above there and then you land into this page where you have basically the main element is the search form uh, for the 20% that are looking specific things that they are only looking for instance the 5 out of 5 ratings they can click the more search options and make a search based on that and the advanced option used to be at least one month ago look, looks like this probably better maybe nowadays it's more accessible enough yeah and then uh, you get the search results and then you click on on some of them if you find what you were looking for oh yeah and then you land on the page probably if I almost almost uh, was wondering that probably when you land on this page you probably would click this link that what do different ratings mean uh, it's more interesting when you have some lower lower uh, ratings on, on, on the restaurants for instance if it's top two out of five uh, then you want more okay what it actually means that then you would probably would click there also so yeah we're now halfway through uh, I could take a couple of questions now maybe yeah I have seven minutes, yeah, I'm going to time. If you have anything related to the previous topics before we go to the tools. Yes. Uh, Do we need a mic for the question? Oh, we don't. I can repeat the question. Yeah. Go ahead. So, uh, uh, for defining the user and the scenario, how can, on which basis we can uh, start uh, on the, the persona uh, that we, uh, we use to, to define the, the, the different features or...? Uh, you mean like profiling users that they... Yes. Yeah, I mean, you can... Uh, many, many times you actually create... I don't know, it depends on if you create different kind of user profiles and typical kind of devices they use to do some tasks, then you would, you know, configure it that way. But uh, the, the defining user is something that uh, you don't do on, on the tool, on Jamer the tool itself. And, uh, the definitions I had, I was talking here, was more like in, more like what what performance and user means to me. And when we talk about this top, up, up, uh, upcoming demos, uh, I was kind of making sure that uh, what are the definitions here. But te practically, technically, you don't define what's a user in. In, in, in JMeter basically but you define some kind of like things like uh, does it have cookie management and stuff you, you, you describe the browser the user is doing but it's kind of, or, of when you do the scenarios you think of course the, the pr uh, different profiles for the users that they perform kind of different tasks and it might affect you know, what kind of devices or, or browsers they are using and therefore you probably make a slightly different deviation on on, on the other 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 users that they you know perform these requests with these kind of uh, settings. I don't know did that answer the question. Hopefully, and I forgot to repeat the question. But <laughs> yeah. How far do you go in defining these scenarios? Because here, for example, you say 80% normal search, 20% advanced search. But do you go in the 80% uh, these keywords that so many percent this keyword so many percent uh, multiple keywords, etc. Uh, so, is the question that I like, like, do we define the like the the segments by the keyboards, uh, key keywords, or 
Yeah. yeah, and also the, 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 the different roles, uh, concurrency of different tasks being performed. Uh, well, I'm going to answer to the question that hopefully answers that. that. So basically, how do I define the segments in, in JMeter? Okay, you can load segments, go. Yeah. So, so the way that I, when I think different users are doing different tasks, I have thread groups there. I'm going to show it to you then in the demo. And I specify either a percentable user that that will go and run that scenario, and within the scenario you can specify also the percentage of the of the thread amount of users. Uh, there are some details that I couldn't get it work as I would like, but I think it's possible anyway. But my, I find myself just typing it directly, calculating quickly somewhere else, and then typing directly. But I, I know it can do calculations out of that. So when you perform the test, then you say, let's make a 10,000 user test. And then we calculate how many of them are the editors and how many of them are the guys who are, for instance, have uh, accessibility issues and using kind of different setup and et cetera. So you define the thread groups. But when you perform the, the test itself, you, you, you give it a number of users. Hopefully, did that answer your question? Let's see. <laughs> OK. Let's see what the demo. Um, yeah, let's continue. So, other available tools before I demo the JMeter. Uh, so, there's a, this is a one tool that I mentioned. This is something like I wouldn't recommend generally, but there might be some cases for this one. This one is basically just making HTTP request. It doesn't load any JavaScript or J, uh, CSS or any, any, anything like that. That's maybe good for testing only like network bandwidth, maybe. If you're not interested in doing a realistic thing, but actually checking how the bandwidth goes in your infrastructure, that might be good enough for you, maybe. Uh, then there's a Gatling. Uh, that's good for the Java-based web projects. Uh, when you define the test, it's some, some, it looks something like that. And then there's uh, this project, uh, Locust which is a tool, this is interesting if you need a tool that you need a web user interface and this is quite nice for that because uh, I don't know, maybe your client wants to do random tests, I don't know. If, if you need a web UI, there's something that, you, that, that is not depending on somebody, on somebody pressing a command line or something, you know, this is maybe good for that. Or if you want to kind of make an uh, a system internally for your company that uh, we have a template of you know running the performance tests and you want to deliver kind of internally some kind of an interface that somebody some project can you know every now and then press some button somewhere uh, this has a user interface in, in, for the web uh, this was uh, written in Python by the way if you do test locust you use Python then there's a um, lot of this is Funded by Mozilla, uh, it's, it was quite like a simple Python-based test script. I probably wouldn't use this one, but that's one option. And then there's Load Booster, and uh, this is actually, in, I think this is not an, like an open source uh, software, but it's a service that is definitely you should use probably this, and there are a couple of other things that I missed. But this is, I, I brought this because if you are having a like a web service where you have actually like sockets of web sockets open and etc., uh, Chainmeter is for simulating traffic, but Load Booster is for simulating actions. So when 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 you do something with the Load Booster, you basically define what the users do. You are not defining how the the traffic is simulated. There are two things. So basically, it means that if you if, if you want to uh, basically make a re request that, you know, have a, have a WebSocket open and then make another request or something like that. So when is there's also some uh, Ajax request going on, uh, this is a really nice tool because then in this one you just basically say, you know, the user presses a button that has a selector of this and then it clicks and then see what happens. But it's more expensive because it needs to simulate the, the browser there. And the limitation for the service, I, I saw that this, it's 10,000 uh, users and I, I didn't see any mentions about if you need more, if, if 
you can like if you need to request an offer about that or anything it was just you know that's the maximum top I don't know is a technical limitation is it more like the pricing is it just planned for over 10,000 and they use Casper JS for the tests and then there's now the J method that uh, I've been using and this one is really nice it's quite a major major uh, a mature how do you pronounce that and my English isn't my mother language is better. Uh, it is funded by Apache Foundations. It means that the Apache Foundation has plenty of sponsors and then they have a lot of projects. And I, I consider the documentation for Jmeter and also the the if you check the Stack Overflow, there's a lot of like good documentation if you need help on something. And uh, there are also a, a couple of interesting if you uh, Google Jmeter and Drupal you find a couple of really helpful templates also. I uh, can't remember the guy's name, but I was using the template myself also. That was really good. Uh, it also has some recording feature, so if you want to quickly record a session, then just repeat it with larger scale, you can do that. And yeah, so I guess like I need to do the demo now. I was yesterday thinking that should I do a recording or not just in case, or should I just do a live demo? And I was like, I'm tired, I'm going to do a live demo, so I'm really kind of nervous now how it goes. So let's see. How much time I have? I forgot to put the timer. 18 minutes. 18 minutes, okay. Okay, I used 10 minutes for this. So I'm not going to demonstrate how to download JMeter. It's basically a, a package. You go, you, you can Google JMeter and you download it and extract it somewhere. And uh, you need Java for that. And I download to this directory in this one. Script JMeter. Usually, when you actually then run the tests. You don't use the graphical user interface, uh, but you do when you kind of are working on this test, you use the graphical user interface quite often. And basically when you do the tests, you come up with one JMX file, that is the, 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 the test plan file, and you can use that for instance in another like there are some SaaS services like Blazemator or something that are com compatible with the uh, with the file, and you can just upload them, and you can run the same test using designing this graphical user interface into their system or in their system, etc. So, do you see? In a, should I put it a little bigger because there's an option that I can increase the font, but there's no shortcut, so I need to. One by one click. <laughs> no, I'm 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 showing other wrong way. Make sure that you see it. I wish there would be a shortcut for this. <laughs> I guess there's a reason to not use the <laughs> <laughs> So this is this is now I'm gonna put the timer so I don't run out of time. So uh, this is the view when you start from scratch, and you have like a um, test plan here. You can, I think, I never actually use multiple test plans, but here basically you start by creating a thread group, which means that uh, it will be, or well, there are many ways to do this, but at least I use one. Uh, thread group for performing one scenario. So this was kind of like, this is where I put the number of users, let's say like 800 are doing this scenario, then I would create another thread group that are using something else at the same time, like, a, uh, like a reading the news or something, 1000 there, or then you can use some variables and then you calculate out of, out of them. You can define variables from the test plan or you can use also another element for, the, for this. So basically, this graphical user interface is all about basically making this three here. So you create a 
thread group, I'm going to use an example, just one user. The ramp up period means that how much, how much time it takes when it, it is using or when all the users are out there. And then you can specify the loop count. I, uh, I usually tend to use forever because I want to run the test for a certain time, which I specify here under the scheduler. I want to perform, let's say, five minutes, uh, five minutes for, for one user, for instance. And, and uh, I want that the user, when it finishes the scenario, it starts over. Because when I, do this, uh, when I run these tests, I want to know how many concurrent users the service can handle. And it means that uh, basically when the user finishes, it's just continuous. So I want to get the, the total number that it can handle. And therefore, I also specify here that when there's some errors for the user or something, then it will stop the thread. So it means that you, let's say you put 1,000 users in, in 100 seconds, uh, you'll see that the users are using your service, and then you get more users and more users that are accumulating. And then basically, once you start to get some errors, there's probably some performance issues. It might be also some software logical issues, I don't know. But then you start to see that the user account is actually dropping instead of like increasing. So that's, that's the way I configure this. But depending on the, actually, you can use in different kind of performance tests. Like, if, if, you, if you're measuring some other things than realistic scenarios, these are really helpful and uh, like useful for, for specifying some other cases. But this is the thing I use and recommend to get the answer that how many concurrent user, users it handles. So now, once I have now a thread group of one user that I'm going to use, which is run for 10 seconds, uh, I will create now under this element um, a sampler. It's going to fall. Wrong one. I need to take it over. As you can see, there are other interesting things here also you can measure. Let's stick with HTTP things. So now you get this configuration form. And here I want to specify that it will go to this address and we're here in the front page. And then there are some options here that are really small. I'm going to read for you. The first one is redirect automatically, follow redirects, Use keep alive, use multiple uh, parts dash form data for post and then browser compatible headers. Uh, I usually tend to this, leave this as a default. Uh, the most impact actually has the follow redirects because, well, if you land in the page that has a redirect, of course, the normal user would follow that. But on top of that, when you do then error checking, you're usually checking that the response gives you 200 OK response status. And if you don't have if you have this unchecked and you have that assertion there, it means that it will give you an error because you actually get an, 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 an redirect response. And then for a request you can specify of course there are different methods. This is a really helpful for also to to do a really easy tool to do some REST API performance test for instance. So you have different methods. I don't know can you even make your own phones here? Maybe. Didn't try out. Maybe it works. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then the parameters and what it does. And you can also specify files to upload. So, okay, now when I hit play here, it starts to. Oh, now it's just recommends to save the, the, the test plan, which I decided not, not to save. So I have a couple of problems. Okay, maybe that. I think. Oh, that's taken. <laughs> I, 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 I went this through before. So yeah, let's see what happens. So now you see here in the top right corner that that it's it, it hits and then it stops. 
So we have one problem is, for instance, that at the moment, if you go actually to this one, this address, because it's on private beta and I don't get to the VPN, my VPN, I, can, I don't know why I cannot basically enter it from this Wi-Fi. It's unauthorized. So I'm going to give an extra configuration element to this. So I'm going to add a configuration element I don't know, it doesn't matter actually the order of here. And then I'm going to configure here. I need to check from the other, other instance now that uh, was because I don't remember this from top of my head. Then you're gonna see the password and I get access to it. <laughs> it's gonna be public soon. <laughs> Nobody saw it. <laughs> I was fast enough. <laughs> and, okay. Maybe it works now. Let's see what happens. But now I see it's one as one. So what it's doing right now, it's actually now in the front page all the time. Just one user. So let's stop it there. Um, uh, then it, it was the ramp up. Numbers would be there. Yeah, true. Yeah, so I can demo this also. So there will be 10, for 10 seconds, I want that in 5 seconds uh, there's 50 users in 5 seconds out there. And the duration of the test is 10 seconds. So. Now when I hit play, you see that the number increases and in 5 seconds it's 50 out of 50. And then when our duration ends at 10 seconds, then it will drop off. Now the thing is that it's not really realistic that you go into a page and then there's a, the loop forever going on. So once the page load is done, it will make another one. So now we can see it. So next thing to make to see or see a little bit what's happening here, we're gonna add here a listener. This one. And <coughs> remember where you're we're doing the production performance tests, like with big numbers, it, it, it starts to use your CPU memory and etc. Uh, you must remember to disable this because these use a lot of uh, CPU and memory when you run the tests on your machines. So when you are uploading then the file to some, some server or in entertainment or infrastructure you probably set up, you, you, you need to remember to disable those because you don't want to run uh, the tests with this enable because it will eat the, 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 the machine's uh, resources. For that, you should use instead another listener that's the simple data writer which is designed to basically just uh, cache the results and write and not focus on the graphical interface because once the, the test is run uh, or executed you can load the file and then you can view afterwards the results but these other elements like this are you know working on on the run and it, it's resources of the the machine and in this case we we'll use it it's just 50 users so now you can see that it's basically quite a, a lot of requests for 10 seconds. But now there's another thing that we don't know are they actually all succeeded requests. So to make sure of that, then we create an assertion under this HTTP request I meant. And we want to make sure that, well, maybe I can make it global. So all the requests I would make, I would expect that the request response code equals to 200. So now when I run this, it's now also making sure that it will respond with the 200 OK 
response. So we can actually now test it. If I would be expecting something else, let's see how it, if it works. Still. Now this, I'm, I'm used to I'm used to actually put the response assertion under the HTTP request. So I'm kind of testing this myself also. Now they are failing. And you can see the number tries to push up. Oh, sorry. Let's repeat it again. You can see that the, it's trying to kind of. No, it's succeeding. No, what's happening? Confused. Yeah, I guess. Now you can see it's trying to kind of push more users, but then at the same time we're getting errors and we'll stop the threads. It means like that's the maximum amount. So I tried to kind of make a rush there, but uh, all of them failed, basically. Yeah, let me check how much time I have. I'm getting confused with the amount of windows I have here. I think I need to move on now. Uh, I would like to demo the other things. Uh, yeah, I, I demo one thing, one important thing actually. The realistic one here is that when you make a, make an HTTP request for and you're getting ready to submit a form, you need to take the token from the previous request and use that in the second request, in the post request, to make sure that uh, uh, that. Uh, it's called that cross-site request forgery protection there uh, goes correctly. And for that, you basically, <coughs> you basically would create an, under the request you want to pass it from, you make a post processor, and you can use either a jQuery extractor or some other things. And in here, You would use, no, actually, I usually use the regex one. And then I would create a variable that I would use, like the token. And then uh, I would create a There are many records you can use. I just copy pasted this from somewhere. I can't remember where and it worked. I never usually do records from top of my head. And, and if somebody says he's doing it, he's lying. I always <laughs> use some tools to check it out because it's it's I, I cannot do it. So basically, I make a record. So records from from the request to basically read out the the form build ID or actually yeah this is not token it's the build ID uh, because I need that then uh, in the other request and then I get an an variable that I can use in another request uh, that would then use in post requests in the body data for instance or in the parameters so make a post request and then you use the variable and then it starts to work etc. Uh, I wish I could post maybe a, an example test plan JMX file uh, for this so uh, I will tweet about this so you can go and test the actual scenario which I introduced there because it's quite useful. It will have then the, the CSV file you will be using like the profiles that somebody mentioned that that you want you want to use identities there and there are tools that you can download a CSV file out of it and then you can use those as in in the in the in the forms. Also in this scenario when I was running the real one, I was using I I asked the, our analytic uh, team that can they do an export of all the search keyboard uh, key keywords they use so I can use that as a source to make a realistic searches. 
uh, on the performance test and they gave me an export and surprisingly and happily there was also some keywords that didn't return any results which is realistic so, so I created a nice uh, scenario out of it. But yeah, this is a quick demonstration how to start with it. There are many of kind of elements you can use and a lot of resources out on the internet how to kind of make your awesome scenario there. And I'll try to share the, the, the one I actually used. I can quickly have a, show it to you the tree of the actual test that I used. So this is the real one. As you can see, I've disabled a couple of, of the listeners because, well, except this one I was using for writing the data. But here I'm also enabled the cookie manager uh, then I'm extracting the the search key keywords. And then I'm going to the home page and I'm using here some thinking time. So the realistic user actually reads the page instead of going right away in the second millisecond to the next one. So and I added some randomness. So from two to ten seconds, then it goes to the hygiene rate, uh, ratings landing page. Uh, and then from there, it will extract the the build ID that I will need need later. And then it again thinks a little bit what to search and then it performs the search with the post requests and, and then again thinking and then there's an if controller so if I don't get search results at all then I probably to stop the test there but if I get some results then I will basically go to the search result page and you can see that I'm using here a variable that is extracted from the previous one yeah, yeah this one I'm using CSS jQuery extractor so basically a, run, um, a random match from the search result, so you, I used a selector here, and then define it as a uh, search result add variable. And then if I have results, then I do that one. So, yeah, that was a quick demo there. And and uh, quickly, then the results that I, I, I've been, that, that's the most exciting stuff where you'll be planning your scenarios and then doing the stuff and then running really exciting and, and the developers are waiting what, what are the results. And then uh, in placemeter you have some graphics out of that, but then I like to actually use New Relic and see the actual impact there. So from here I was using 2000 user scenario from my laptop and that's like not a lot. But uh, this was for testing a, s a minimal infrastructure that we uh, have, which is basically one load balancer and two web servers and one database server. And this, these are basically the screenshots from the new relic. And it looks like yes, most of the servers are you know doing something. How much time? You go like that. Over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just you know quickly. And this, like clicking slides on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, if you want to talk about testing, I'll be in the un until the end of the event today. So, grab me some, some, and then let's talk uh, about the performance testing, etc. So, thank you. So one day kind of like, you know, investigating and then uh, doing the simplest scenarios like going to a home base and maybe click another link, uh, I don't know, maybe 
one or depends kind of a lot of work so that you have to be a behind of the end or have a user password and we are the password and etc. So so but it's really simple. Like the example I did is like just like that. But uh, the scenario that I 